How are we doing? Welcome to our channel. This will be pretty amazing and exciting day for all of us. I'm telling you, there will be no left and turn stones. Oh my God, what am I saying? There will be no stones left and turn once we are done. So better hit that intro. <laughs> Welcome back again. My name is Ben. I'm a cameraman. No, I'm a photographer and a retoucher to my own photos. I've been doing photography for quite some time now, doing some commercials, high end fashion shoot, and most of the time I edit my own photos because I, I find fun and challenging. So uh, I invite you guys to join me in this uh, adventure. This is going to be my first time YouTubing. So you got to cut me some slack. I would really appreciate it. Oh my God. All right, now that those unsynchronous clapping is out of the way, I mean, I'm just saying, let's get into business. Okay, let me share to you guys my thought process and opinion in taking my photos and editing it, okay? As we go along, you will see that I love to shoot raw. And that's the only way for me, especially for commercial works, for high-end clients and high-end fashion shoots because it gives me more leeway in adjusting my, the components of my photos without jeopardizing the quality of it. Versus if I shot it in JPEG, that had already been processed by your camera, mine I would love to have it raw because my skills, my eyes, my methods, my experience throughout my career in photography and editing are the main ingredients that I would love to incorporate to that photo to produce a pleasurable output for me and especially to my clients. All right, first order of business before I touch those sliders adjusting my photos is I assess it. Uh, look at it as a bigger picture and see what are the adjustments that I need to make. And for this instance, I shot it a little bit underexposed because I, I shot it with a uh, beauty dish and it is very notorious in giving out specular highlights, which I'm trying to avoid for, for to this photo shoot. Looking at the photo, I know I, I know I have to adjust my exposure, crank it up a bit. So uh, let me just do that. As you can see, as I adjusted my exposure, it created a hot spots on the T-zones by the, by the forehead and by the bridge of the nose. So uh, with this, I have to counter it with my highlights. So I'm going to have to tone it down. See, in editing, it's the, the main principle is every time you push, you have to pull something back and work it out from there. A very simple but very useful and effective principle that could help you along the way. Then I'm going to have to open up my shadows a bit, you know, just to see where it goes right here. I, I think that's good enough for me. All right, once I'm happy, I'm going to touch on the white slider because I'm still seeing some specular highlights here and there. So I adjust it and it's there. So it's not like there's a Lightroom police that will capture me or something. Okay, that's, that's where I play it. Okay, the next slider I'll be touching will be black. So I'm going to give back the black to the black, whatever. Because once you go black, you can't go back, right? That's, that's how they say it, at least. Surprise, motherfucker. All right, there you go. All right, so uh, the DA slider, of course. Why don't we use it? Uh, for this slider, I see to it that I flatten my, my photo a bit together with the contrast because I, I can always bring that back once I'm in Photoshop. I don't know about you guys, but I would love to have full control of my contrast once I go to the Photoshop. Oh, it sounded like a grocery store or something, but... You know okay here's your before and after and I'm happy with it so the next thing I do is I transfer it to Photoshop but for the meantime I, I let me just clear this out to you guys I don't do skin retouching or anything at all here I always do that in Photoshop but upon transferring of course uh, the things that I touch would be uh, file settings I always put it in TIFF format because it's going to preserve all the details of your picture going to uh, Photoshop. Adobe RGB, of course, because uh, it will give you a wider spectrum uh, in dealing with your colors 
and 16 bits will always, uh, you know, will be the best because it will give you more leeway in adjusting your photos once you're in Photoshop. And I don't do sharpening here as well. So I turn off the sharpen tab or whatever. I don't tick it because I always do my sharpening on the last part of editing. That's, that's very important that you have to know from here before going, moving forward to uh, editing the photo, okay? Okay, once in Photoshop, uh, it's a never-ending assessment. This time I'll assess my photo, which uh, things that I need to take out and fix. But the good thing here is that I have the tools. So I'm gonna click on layer, add layer, and then rename it as map. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark all those things that, that shouldn't be there. So it's gonna take some time guys. So from here, I don't wanna bore you. So let me entertain you with something like this. All right, so once you're done mapping your uh, photo, which one you wanna take out, uh, I go ahead and copy the background layer and then turn off the map layer and zoom the devil out of it. Go to those little devil that you have to take out and work from there. And I'm using a healing brush tool instead of spot healing brush tool because healing brush tool, it gives you more control which texture you want to replace those devils out, all right? So again, it's gonna take some time for me. So are you ready? Do you want to be entertained? Again, do you want to be entertained? So let me hit it. Okay, okay, hold your horses, boys. Just me. Anyways, here's your before and after. And I know it's subtle, but it's there. I can't impose it enough if I tell you, you guys. Uh, if ain't broke, don't fix it. Natural pores should, should stay where they are. And for you to have a more natural looking photo in the end. Alright, let's go ahead and move forward to frequency separation which we're going to use a bit differently to soften up the skin, okay? But before we dive into it, let me explain to you the principle behind frequency separation. So by theory, it separates the texture of your skin from its colors and tonality. And in layman's term, or if I could simplify it for you, it only means that if your editing doesn't involve any textures such as, but not limited to, unwanted pimples, blotches, hey, who wants pimples, huh? And tiny strands of hair over the face or nuances on the clothing or some parts of your photo. Well, uh, you always attack the problem on the low layer where your colors and tonalities reside, all right? By the way, if for example, you failed to fix uh, a problem a while ago for some reason, this is a good opportunity for you to correct it. All right, since we have the texture layer, you can go ahead and activate it and then go to your healing brush tool and then or clone, clone stamp tool and fix the devil out of it. Of course, we need to set up our frequency separation. So in order to do this, just make two copies of your background copy by clicking on Command J or Control J on a PC and then the lower one, just name it low, that's where your tonalities and colors reside. And then on the top one, this texture, so the name goes. And then pull up your Gaussian Blur. Mine is already set up as a hotkey, so it's just one click of a button for me. But just in case, go to your filter menu, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. All right, at this point of time, let me talk to you heart to heart, all right? Listen to me here. Please, 
there isn't any exact amount of number of pixels when it comes to this step for Gaussian blur because it varies from photos to photos but throughout my experience in editing the sweet spot is between 8 to 21 and I would 21 being 21 as high as I would go okay the danger of going overboard is that it's gonna give you a, a muddy result let me just go ahead and process this and click on apply image right here so this is a clear indication that you are in the wrong track when you are when your photo is showing up like this uh nope it's it's a big no-no all right let me just dim your light and let's you see let me see what i'm trying to say so it's see it's it's too blurry for me even i lower down the gaussian blur it's it's gonna end up blurry and and for the shadows that I would like to even out the tones, it's gonna give me a blurry and muddy result as well. So now, that's that's uh, that's a big no-no for me. All right, see. Okay, and then let me show you the danger of going too low on your Gaussian blur. All right, now let me show you the danger of putting it at a lower pixel. So here we go. Let me click OK and then. Apply image uh, right here. There you go. Click OK. And then change it to linear light. All right, here we go. So if I do the next step, it's going to affect the small portion of the pixel. So what I end up here are I'm blurring the, the small number of pixels and then leaving some spots that was not targeted by my pixel in Gaussian blur so I'll end up with a blurry and spotty image which I'll be fixing again uh, for the next step but that's not how to do it so let me show you the best way to do it all right I guess the tip that I could lay down here is that in using the Gaussian blur for frequency separation as long as you see that the problematic area you want to attack has faded okay to the picture it's and then hitting the, the the sweet spot between 8 to 21 then you are in a good good position okay now let's go ahead and continue so having to set my Gaussian blur a while ago I'm gonna go to apply image and this is an exact formula guys I tell you all right for the apply image the only the things that I touch here will be layer set it to low that's the first uh, copied layer we did a while ago and then for blending option you're gonna have to set it to add for the scale it's 2 and offset 0 since we are working on a 16 bit and this is etched on stones so you don't change the scale and offset because that is written on stones guys it was already figured out by some genius in the Photoshop world so I wish I could tell you I was the one but no it's not me anyways kudos to him all right moving forward now go to your blending option and change it to linear light and then uh, zoom in a bit and all right then I group this and then rename it as frequency separation just to be a little bit organized I wish I could do that with my life but uh, anyways okay upon grouping this two I create another layer here and I'm gonna let you see what's that for on the next video that we'll be doing because that will play a significant role later on all right but for this uh, just go ahead and grab your lasso tool so this technique is it will even out the tones of your skin and soften it a bit there aren't no crack or wrong numbers here just make sure that there aren't no spills okay and you could i could let you see the before and then the after and then go ahead and go to the different parts of the faces or skin that you want to even out and i know it's going to be pretty boring again so let me entertain you with this. OK, 
Okay, let me continue to talk while I'm fixing some of the problems here. I guess you're worried about your shadows and highlights that you lost while the, doing this step. Don't worry guys, because the next tutorial that I'll be uploading, I guess within two days, would be burning and dodging. And that's where we will bring back all those shadows and highlights and a little bit of contouring on the face. Really, I don't want to bore you with uh, information overload. And I want you to be confident enough before moving on to the next step. So if you check this description below, you'll see a link that contains uh, the original photo and the actions I made for you. And that's all going to be free. Don't have to pay anything. But I hope you guys could click that subscribe button and your comments to improve my tutorial will be highly appreciated, all right? And I guess you're wondering why you're not seeing my face on the screen. Well, uh, it, it's not that, you know, I'm assuming you're insisting. <laughs> Anyways, now, the, the reason behind it is that, as what I told you, this is my first tutorial. I'm not fully equipped yet, but, you know, in the future, I guess I'll be doing that, all right? Well, it's not like I'm proud of it, but, you know, to give you more of an interaction, guys. That's my main reason. Okay. Before I end this tutorial, I wish your family and everyone you love is safe in this time of crisis. And I'm going to leave you guys with this before and after. And I hope you click on the subscribe button and do, please do comment below, all right? So see you on the next tutorial, guys. God bless.